Hey, what's up guys? It is Dominic and in this video we're going to be covering my entire 2023 recap. So this is kind of a personal video for me and for anyone wondering how my 2023 went, then who knows, maybe you'll enjoy this. I think it's kind of an interesting concept for a video. How much money did I bring in? How much did I spend? Did I blow through absolutely everything? Or was I smart with my money? Well, let's find out. And I know at the bottom here it says the best year of my life. I don't really know if it was the best year of my life. I will say it was definitely the most important year of my life and I'll explain that at the end. But if you're brand new to the channel, you have no idea who I am. My name is Dominic Baptist. I'm actually one of the top affiliates in the world for high level, the best software company on the planet that allows you to white label it, customize it, repackage and resell it at whatever monthly cost that you want to sell it for. And who knows, maybe have one of the best financial years of your life. And if you want to learn more about my affiliate program, then stay tuned till the end and I will give you everything that you need to know. But enough about all that, let's get into the 2023 recap. All right, let's start with the thing everybody's wondering about, the finances. How much money did I actually make? What were my expenses? What were my investments? And the actual number breakdown. So let's get into it. I put all my GHL income together. So that's anything I pretty much made from software, which obviously is my main income. And that was roughly around $2.2 million. And then below that, it says CPS. This is custom property solutions, my land clearing business. I also own a land clearing business for anyone who's new to the channel and doesn't know that. And that company brought in about 400,000 this year. So that was the income, not too bad for a 27 year old, but yeah, I still think I could do better. Now let's move on to the expenses. What did I spend? Well, on ads, I spent about a quarter of a million dollars. So $250,000 on ads, which actually is in that bad. My ROI is pretty ridiculous on that because of the monthly recurring revenue. And then I have investments under expenses. Obviously, investments aren't really an expense, but it was just something that I spent money on. So I put it there. I spent almost a million dollars this year on investments. Now, I would like to say that I didn't buy all of these investments in cash. I will discuss which ones I did buy in cash and which ones I financed with the bank because obviously there's a massive difference between the two. So investments were around 880,000. And then, of course, I had some fun. I bought some cars. I bought a boat. That was around $360,000. Was it a smart financial decision? Absolutely not. Was it fun? Of course. And then there's traveling. I spent around $50,000 on traveling. I will explain how that's even possible very soon when I get in the traveling section. But yeah, I think I went on like seven or eight vacations. So we're going to break those down too. And then the final section is investments. So I bought farmland. I actually just did that like two weeks ago. And that was $150,000. I did buy this in cash, but I'm going to get a loan for it later. It's kind of complicated. But basically in order for me to get the deal, I did have to buy it in cash. And then after I pay my taxes this year, I can get a lot more loans. And then I officially bought a home this year, which was awesome. It was my first ever home. And that was around $310,000, which I actually will be turning into a rental property when I buy my next home. The next one is retirement. I spent about $300,000 into my retirement. And this is just like stocks and funds and stuff like that. A lot of boring finance stuff, but 300 grand is not too bad. My goal is to reach a million dollars in there probably in the next year and a half or two years because the compounding interest on a million dollars when you're in your 20s is a ridiculous amount of money when you're in your 50s and 60s. I'm talking upwards of 40, 50, 60 million dollars if I keep adding to it. And then lastly is machine of course, I run custom property solutions, which is the land clearing business. So we had to buy machines and I spent around $120,000 in pure cash. That's not counting all the loans and everything else with loans. That's probably upwards of three or 400 K. But when you're running a physical business like that, you got to spend money. All right. The first section I want to break down is the cars and boat section, because this was really fun, but not really smart. And like I said, when you're in your twenties and you've made this much money, it's kind of hard not to ball out on a boat or nice cars or even yes, go karts. I'll get to that in a second. So as long as it's in your budget, as long as it makes sense, this is totally fine to do. The first thing I got was a Tesla Model X Plaid. Now, technically I got it in December of 2022, but we're just gonna bump that up to 2023. And that bad boy was $160,000. Now this Plaid is amazing. And if anyone knows anything about the Go High Level Affiliate Program, then you already know that I didn't really have to pay for this. Go High Level actually gifts their top affiliates electric vehicles. Now I did finance it and I did pay for it, but how the program works is High Level will pay me every single month that I'm paying for the car. So I truly feel like I didn't buy the car. It's basically a gift. If anything, I'm making money while owning it, which is pretty cool. But either way, I got a Tesla and yes, it was 160 grand. And for all of you car freaks, I'm fully aware that it's not worth 160 grand anymore. The price of the Tesla sadly went down about a month after I bought it. Very depressing. And thank God I won this or else maybe I'd be losing sleep over it. The next car that I bought, which I actually just bought for Christmas was the Ford Bronco Raptor. This thing is insane. It's an absolute unit. It's a beast and go off-roading. I wanted a Raptor so badly. It was so hard to find a Bronco Raptor, especially in my town. As soon as we got one, I bought it and I bought it in cash. I was not trying to finance it with the financing options. They wanted to charge me upwards of $150,000. I said, absolutely not. I know how you car salesmen work and I wasn't falling for it. So I paid for it in cash and I saved about 30, 40 grand. That was pretty much it for the cars. Now I did buy a speed boat, which was around $110,000. It's one of these nice showroom boats. I saw this beautiful blue crown line and it was right before summer hit. And I was like, I gotta have it. So I bought the boat and no, I did not buy it in cash. I probably should have, but I just got a nice little loan on it. Nothing too crazy. And I am fully aware that I'm not going to make money on this boat, but it's definitely a fun 
one time and my friends and family love it. I would like to point out that you should always be friends with someone who owns a boat, never be the person that owns it. It is an absolute pain. And then lastly, and oddly, one of my favorite things I got were go-karts. I got two of these things. They're the nine by go-karts by Segway, and they're surprisingly fast and electric and have pretty immediate acceleration. They're so fun. My friends and family love this as well. And it feels like I basically get to be a kid again, but I get to buy and use the dangerous toys that my parents never got me. Mostly because they didn't exist back then, but still, this would have been pretty cool. The next section is investments. Now this is smart, but not fun. I wouldn't say it's entirely not fun. There are some fun things that you can invest in, but for the most part, retirement mutual funds, it just feels like you're giving your money away and you're not even going to get to use it or see it for like 40 years. But your future self will thank you. So I'm glad I did it. First thing on the list is retirement and about $300,000 into retirement. Now, of course, not everything is in like an IRA. There are maxes to SEP accounts and IRAs. And for anyone wondering what that is, it's basically just retirement accounts. And they're really good for tax purposes. They do have a max amount that you can put in those and I am putting in the max amount every single year and that maximum amount is based on the salary that you make so I can put in a pretty good amount and then of course I have like mutual funds and stocks and stuff like that and like I said previously my goal is really to get that to about a million dollars if not two million because with compounding interest this could be so much money when I'm 40 50 or 60 years old the next thing that I bought was farmland I was always going to buy farmland I've talked to you guys about this before I did not think it would happen so soon but my mom found a piece of land she said do you want it I said yep and we bought it right then and there it's only 22 acres so 150 grand 22 acres, nothing crazy, not huge, but it's mine and I have land and I can make money on it. Which brings me to the next investment, which is machinery. Now, of course, I run Custom Property Solutions, which is my land clearing business. And we have been through multiple machines right now. We have an amazing excavator and we have a skid steer. We've got two trailers and two trucks. We're actually getting into government jobs. We're even talking to the union and things are about to get really, really big this year. So I'm pretty excited about what's about to happen next. And then lastly, probably the most important thing I bought was a home because I have to live somewhere. And funny enough, that's where I'm filming this right now. So I bought this house for about $310,000. I put 40% down. I financed the rest and I'm probably going to end up paying this house off in the next two or three years. Is it my dream home? Did I spend a ridiculous amount of money? Could I have bought a million dollar mansion? Of course I could have done that, but I decided to play it safe. And honestly, I think this was the smartest decision I ever made because everyone remembers their first home. And especially in a market like this, when it's almost impossible for someone to buy one, the last thing you want to do is regret it. And I can assure you, I won't regret buying this one. Now let's talk about something I really don't regret. And that's traveling. I did a lot of traveling in 2023. As you can see, I went on seven different vacations and these were the costs of each one of them. Now I know what you're thinking, how do you spend $13,000 on one trip or $10,000 on one trip? Well, the answer is you go with multiple people and you buy everything because that's exactly what I did. The first thing I did with my friends is we went to Wisconsin on a ski trip and I just realized I put $10,000 there. It was not $10,000. It was definitely less than 10,000. But as you can see on number seven, I went to Colorado on another ski trip and that was actually more than 10,000. So we're just going to average both of them out to 10 grand. But for anyone wondering about skiing in Wisconsin, it is not $10,000. You could actually have a pretty good time for around a thousand bucks. The next trip I went on was Naples, Florida. Naples was amazing. Honestly, it's what made me want to move to Naples and get a place there. Now, yes, I realize it's a lot of older people that live there. It's nothing like Miami, which is loud and crazy and kind of young, which honestly just isn't for me. I'm not a massive partier. I don't really care for Miami. I would much rather live in Naples, Florida with the amazing food. The traffic's not as bad. It's definitely a lot cleaner and the beaches aren't as crowded. So that trip was a 10 out of 10. Totally worth the $5,000. Most of that money went to the Airbnb anyway. The next trip was Scott Taylor, Arizona. Now my family lives out there, so this wasn't too expensive to do. I did help pay for a couple of people and I bought some dinners. So that's why the price is $2,500. But honestly, I could do Arizona for like 500 bucks if I wanted to. I actually used to live in Scottsdale, Arizona. I was really just there to see my family and to go look at homes. The next trip was Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Now this was unexpected. My family was already on the trip and then they texted me later if I wanted to swing by. So I swung by, bought some nice dinners, had some crab legs. I rented a boat for my cousin and his friends. The waters were extremely rough. It was very difficult to drive it. I don't recommend taking a rental too far out into the ocean because it's absolutely terrifying. Which brings me to the next trip where we went very far out into the ocean and that was the Florida Keys. Now this was a complete experience for me. Now yes, it is by far the most expensive trip I have ever been on in my life. I paid for multiple people. I rented a boat for like five days and the water was crystal clear. Something you really just have to be there. The photos and the videos don't do it justice. That trip was absolutely mind blowing and everyone had an amazing time. But of course I had to one up it by going to Hawaii next. Now the reason Hawaii was so much less expensive than the Florida Keys is because I only took one person. And this was an amazing one-on-one -on -one trip. I mean, I had so much fun. She had so much fun and we actually booked another trip to go back in May. So hopefully we'll have a great time then too. But for anyone who hasn't been to Hawaii, it's beautiful. It's amazing. There's so much to do. Just make sure you pick your days right because it could rain a lot. But lucky for us, we were there for 10 days. I think it only rained twice. But regardless, Hawaii was amazing. The food was incredible. The views were incredible. And I saved a bunch of money on Airbnb because I didn't have to buy one. We did actually have a free place to stay. But for two nights, I got us a very nice hotel room at the Royal Hawaiian. And that was insane. I highly recommend this hotel. It is hands down the nicest hotel
hotel I've ever been to in my life. But it's extremely expensive. It was around $1,000 per night. And then lastly, to end 2023 and to start 2024, I went to Colorado. Now for anyone who's ever skied in Colorado or skied in general, it's expensive. It is not a trip that you take lightly. The equipment that you have to rent, the ski lift tickets, the flights, the Airbnb, the coats, the jackets, the pants, it is unbelievably expensive. But if you're skiing on a massive mountain, the views are beautiful. The snow is usually much better. And instead of you getting down the hill in five seconds, it could take 30 minutes to an hour to get down a mountain, which is exactly what you want when you're skiing. So there you go. Those were all my vacations. Those were the expenses for the vacations. And yes, they were completely worth it. And to finish off this video, we have my accomplishments. I think this was really important for me to go back and look at the things that I did, look at the things that I won. What did I actually accomplish in 2023? Was it worth it? And this also gives me motivation to accomplish even more in 2024. So the number one accomplishment that I had by far was paying for my brother's wedding. I'm not going to talk about how much I spent because I can get a little personal. And I actually didn't add it into the second slide of my expenses, but it was definitely a good amount of money. And it released a ton of stress on both my family and my brother's wife's family. This is definitely kind of a dream of every sibling to be able to pay for a wedding or something big. And my brother had actually helped me a lot in the past, especially with all my business ideas and entrepreneurships. So this was a great way to pay him back. Which brings me to number two, which is gifting family members. Once again, this is kind of personal, so I'm not going to talk about the money part, but I definitely gifted a few family members. I have a lot more family members to gift in the future. But obviously, when you come into a lot of money, it's one of the first things that you're going to do. Take care of your family in any way that you can. And by no means was I buying them homes or cars or anything crazy like that. But sometimes a couple thousand dollars goes a long way, helps pay the bills. Now, I was definitely able to do that this year, which brings me to number three, which was taking friends and family on trips. Obviously, I just broke all of that down in the last slide. And of course, the reason that those trips were so expensive was because I brought multiple people and I paid for pretty much everything. I think that's one of the coolest things you can ever do is just take all of your friends and your family on nice trips. My uncle, who is extremely successful, used to take my entire family, which is around 25 people on insane trips. Now, those trips were like $50,000 each. And it was just one of the coolest things that I'll remember for the rest of my life. I'd also have to point out that my grandpa did the same. And it's actually the easiest way to make money help families and friends rather than tear them apart viciously because having a lot of money is not all sunshine and rainbows but uh we'll get to that later and then number four is i reached 20,000 subscribers on youtube what an insane accomplishment thanks to everybody who subscribed everyone who watches i know 20,000 doesn't seem like a massive number but on youtube it's so difficult to grow on youtube these videos are really hard to make they take a lot of time to edit they take a lot of time to figure out it's hard to come up with new ideas it's not like tiktok or instagram where you can just make a post in 30 minutes these videos can take weeks and for some reason it's a lot harder for someone to click a subscribe button than to click a follow button. And I really wish YouTube would figure something out to make it easier because I really want to get 100,000 subs. I'm going to get that YouTube plaque one day. And then number five is I received my golden trophy. As you can see, there's a photo of my golden trophy right there. It's extremely heavy. And if you don't know what it is, it's the affiliate program for Go High Level. They give out the bronze trophy for reaching $250,000 in commission, the silver trophy for $500,000, and the gold trophy for a million dollars in commission. I actually won this a long time ago, but it finally came in the mail a couple weeks ago. And it's even bigger and better than I ever imagined. I freaking love this thing. Which brings me to number six, which is reaching $2 million in affiliate commission. Now they actually just came out with this high level commanders thing. As you can see over there on the far right next to the trophy, the highest level you can possibly be in the go high level affiliate program is the high level commander three, which is reaching $2 million in commission. And I just recently did it $2 million in commission on GHL. What an insane experience. The exponential growth has been unbelievable. And it looks like go high level is going to have to come out with some new achievements because I think I did it all but I can't thank this company enough. I mean, I wouldn't be able to do anything without all of this. Everything you saw in the previous slides was done with Go High Level. I love this platform. I don't care what anybody says about it. I don't care if people think it doesn't work. I don't care if you think it's buggy. It has changed my life. It's changed my family's life and it's going to change my future family's life. Now, do I think all of you guys are going to hit $2 million in commission or make $2 million with SaaS? Absolutely not. This is not only the greatest thing to ever happen in my life. It's also the hardest thing that's ever happened in my life. So many moving parts had to occur. So many doors closed and open at the right times. And that's really what success is all about. It's about being in the right place at the right time. And I happen to be in the right place at the right time. And do I still think it works? Of course it works. Go High Level is amazing. I've trained a bunch of people to just crush it. But you just got to work. You got to work really hard. Never look at it as black and white. Always think outside the box. And I promise you will see the potential in it and you'll be fine. But enough with the inspirational crap. Now we've got number seven, bought a home and land. Obviously we've gone over this, but this is of course an accomplishment. I bought a home and I bought some land. Now being 27 years old and only finding Go High Level when I was 24, I could not imagine that I'd be here today saying I bought a home and land. Not rented a home, not rented land, 
I bought both of these. I own them. They are mine. I became a 26-year-old millionaire in 2023. And then I became a 27-year-old multimillionaire in 2023 by making my second million dollars. I am extremely grateful. I can't believe all of this has happened. And I cannot wait to see what I do in 2024. And like I said in the beginning, if you're watching this and you're brand new to Go High Level and you want to know what it's like being my affiliate, well, the first thing is I have no secrets. I really talk about everything. And I try to talk to all my affiliates, anyone that messages me. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you signed up five seconds ago or five years ago. I will gladly talk to you. I will try to make sure you get everything you're supposed to get, which is my free course. So anyone can get that, whether you're my affiliate or not, check in the description below, you can get the free course. And that will show you how to get the second course, which is easy. All you gotta do is be my affiliate. And once you're my affiliate, I'll send you the second course. It comes with a completely white labeled onboarding, which by the way, I am working on updating everything right now. The hardest thing by far with being a Go High Level affiliate is all the new updates. I'm always making new videos. I'm always updating things. It's not all sunshine and rainbows up here. Even though, yeah, sometimes it kind of feels like it is. I'd also like to point out that I'm still doing Zoom calls. So if you guys want to set up a one-on-one -on -one private Zoom call with me, you can do that in the description below as well. And with all that being said, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for making 2023 absolutely insane. And here's the 2024, which hopefully will be even more insane. Peace out, guys.